Aloha Biochem. In this video, we finish chapter six with Le Chatelier's Principle. Hello, hello. In the previous lecture, we finished with a question. If you have a reaction which is at equilibrium and you add extra chemical, either reactant or product, to the mixture, what happens? Does the system stay at equilibrium? Is it shifted away? Is it disturbed somehow? Well, the answer is yes, it messes up the equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle explains how the system responds. It reads, if a chemical system at equilibrium is disturbed, the system will react in the direction that counteracts the disturbance. So when you add extra chemical to the reaction mixture that moves it away from equilibrium, the product to reactant proportions are messed up now and the system reacts to get back to equilibrium. It shifts, it reacts in a certain direction to get back there. For an example, let's consider the following exothermic reaction, which is at equilibrium. So you have this reaction occurring and suppose it's at equilibrium. The reaction we've seen before in the previous lecture, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia. And this is an exothermic reaction. It releases 22 kilocalories per mole. So heat is produced. We'll deal with heat in a little bit. But if you have a mixture at equilibrium, I like to imagine a little balance beam underneath the chemical equation. So I draw the balance beam, and if it's at equilibrium, then the amount of products balances the amount of reactants. It doesn't mean the masses of the products equals the masses of reactants, but the proportions are balanced. They're equilibrium proportions. So here's the mixture at equilibrium on the balance beam. Now let's see what happens if we disturb the mixture by messing up some of the concentrations of the chemicals involved in the reaction. And for our first disturbance, let's add a little bit more nitrogen to the mixture. What that does is it makes the mixture have too much reactant. So you can see the balance beam shifts towards the reactant side. There's too much reactant. And to get back to equilibrium, some of that reactant has to convert into product. So the reaction has to shift to the right to restore equilibrium. And uh, that's how easy Le Chatelier's principles, uh, Le Chatelier's principle concepts are. You know, if you use the balance beam, hopefully it makes sense. For another disturbance, this time let's remove some product ammonia. If you remove product from a system which is at equilibrium, well now the product side is kind of light that messed up the proportions of chemicals. So the equilibrium proportions are messed up. To get back to equilibrium, some of the reactant has to shift to form more product. And that will get the, the system back to equilibrium. So it shifts to the right again. For our third disturbance, let's remove some of the reactant hydrogen. This time, if you remove some reactant, now the reactant side is, is light and it's going to have to shift in the backwards direction. So some of the product material will have to reform some reactant in order to restore equilibrium. So the reaction shifts to the left. That's how you deal with concentration changes. Now let's see how heat is involved. So let's see how temperature changes are handled by Le Chatelier's principle. Remember the reaction's an exothermic reaction. It produces a certain amount of heat 
and we can actually take the chemical equation and write the he heat on the product side. Although heat isn't a substance, it is produced and we can write it as one of the products if we wish. So here is the chemical equation written again with that special heat on the product side. And imagine the system is at equilibrium. So the amounts of products balance the amounts of reactants. And let's disturb it. First, by increasing the temperature of the reaction mixture. What you do when you increase the temperature of the mixture, you're adding heat from the outside into the reaction mixture. And that's kind of like you're adding product material. So you got too much heat in there now. It's, it's like too much products. And so it has disturbed the equilibrium of the system. To get back to equilibrium, the reaction has to shift back to the left. So some of the product is going to reform some reactant in order to restore equilibrium. So just by changing the temperature of the system, we have caused some product to form reactant. Okay. And as a result, that changes the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant has decreased. By changing the temperature, we have caused the system to decrease the product and increase the reactant. Remember the equilibrium constant is product concentrations over reactant concentrations. If the product concentrations decrease and the reactant concentrations increase, that's going to change the equilibrium constant. K will decrease. So changing the temperature also changes K. Now, if you have the system at equilibrium again, and you cool the reaction mixture, now you're, you're taking heat away. It's like you put the reaction mixture inside of a refrigerator, the refrigerator takes some of the heat away from the reaction, and that's like you're removing some product. Heat is one of the products, and if you take it away, well now you're light on the product side, and to get back to equilibrium, the reaction shifts to the right to restore equilibrium. And this time, K increases. You have the equilibrium proportions, and by cooling the mixture, it causes it to shift to the right. That increases product, decreases reactant. That changes the equilibrium constant, and K increases this time. Now, for endothermic reactions, everything's opposite. Heat is absorbed in an endothermic reaction and you could write it on the reactant side. And if you increase the temperature, the reaction shifts to the right and K would increase. And if you cool the temperature, the reaction shifts to the left and K would decrease. So everything would be opposite in that case. For the last disturbance category, let, let me, I can't move this up. Okay, I gotta move myself. Uh, here I am. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, here we go. Volume changes. Your textbook discusses this, but it calls it pressure changes. We're, we're gonna teach it a little bit differently or discuss it a little bit differently than how it is covered in the text, but we're essentially going through the same material here. When you have a reaction which occurs in the gas phase, then changing the volume of the reaction mixture is possible, and that can distort the equilibrium as well. So volume changes really only affect gas phase reactions. Imagine the reaction is taking place inside of a cylinder and you have some movable piston, you can cram the gases into a smaller volume, or maybe you can increase the volume. So you can change the volume. And when that, when that changes, you change the pressure of the system as well. So your textbook discusses pressure changes, but we're gonna talk about them as volume changes. So here's your gas phase reaction. It's inside of a 
chamber and we're gonna mess with the volume. And for our reaction, let's stick with the same one. Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia. When you have a reaction involving gases, something that we'll learn in the next chapter is that the more moles of gas there are, the larger the volume they occupy. If you read this chemical equation, one mole of nitrogen gas reacts with three moles of hydrogen gas. That's four moles total on the reactant side, and the products are only two moles of ammonia gas. So you have more gas moles on the reactant side versus product side. Four moles of gas occupies more volume than two moles of gas. So remember that. Let's consider this reaction at equilibrium. And it's taking place inside of some cylinder. It's at equilibrium, so the forward and the reverse directions are just balanced. And let's decrease the volume of the reaction mixture. Let's press this piston down and let's squeeze the reaction into a smaller volume. The way the system is going to respond is to shift towards the side that occupies less volume in order to accommodate the smaller volume. So when you push it into a smaller volume, it's like there are too many gas particles in this small volume and the reactant side has more gas particles. So you got too much reactant, it's distorted and the reaction is going to shift to the right in order to alleviate that disturbance to decrease the number of moles of gas. Now this relation between moles and volume is discussed more fully in chapter seven. There's one more note I wanted to mention about reactions at equilibrium. If you have a chemical reaction which a catalyst speeds up, does the presence of the catalyst itself affect equilibrium? And the answer is no, it does not. Catalysts do not affect equilibrium. They only help the reaction get there faster. So you got a reaction occurring, you throw in a catalyst, it's not going to affect the equilibrium proportions, it's not gonna mess up equilibrium anyway, it's just gonna help it reach equilibrium faster. So that's it for Le Chatelier's principle. Pretty simple, intuitive stuff, I think, but it does take some studying. Make sure you understand how to deal with these three changes. In the next video, we will get into chapter seven and we'll discuss the gas properties. So stay tuned for that. Aloha.